But as far as Mac, specifically about him keeping his job, from the people I've talked to and from my understanding, this is more about they don't have a good alternative. If if they had a guy ready to go that they felt good about, I think Mac would be out this week. But Bailey Zappi was worse than Mac was in this game. He's awful. He doesn't have a whole lot of support in the building. <laughs> Will Greer, we don't know how much of the playbook he knows. Malik Cunningham is not a quarterback still. People got to stop bringing him up. He's not a quarterback. Bill O'Brien talked about it again today. The Greg Bedard Patriots podcast is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Before we get into this autopsy, let's first tell you this episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network, AG1, the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. And Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. And odds are the mobile app you need to know what bets of the day are the smart ones. All right, Greg, it's our job to uh, relive this situation, what happened on Sunday. I was there. That wasn't fun. Patriots obviously blown out 34 to Zippo by the Saints. Just really just your biggest takeaway, Greg, from watching that disaster play out. That's a good question. Um my biggest takeaway is um, that, look, this isn't a good football team, but the offense is completely broken at this point um, in, in so many different ways. Um, from the offensive line, they can't run the ball at all. I think Ramondre Stevenson's average, he was over five yards, I think, last year. He's under three yards this year. The pass blocking, the, the pressure rate, is again too high over 40 percent in this game mac jones um is you know he he wasn't he wasn't sped up in this game but he he wasn't good in this game this is my second lowest rated game for him um the the past targets are awful on this team um you know i basically this is what you get when you try to half-ass it on offense. You try to put together an uh, an island of misfit toys um, that you think it's the smart way to build things is to get other people's trash that people are, are looking to give away. And, you know, maybe you can do that with one or two guys, but with a bunch of guys, it just doesn't work. And I just think at this point, um, the offense is completely broken. And we heard Bill Belichick after the game, well, I heard him after the fact, not in the auditorium, you know, start over. Um, <laughs> they are, they are starting over uh, as a team, uh, as an offense. And that's really all you can do. I mean, 72 to three, Nick, um, you know, it, it calls for drastic changes. And I think we saw that this week with, they changed the schedule around where the players were given off on Monday and it was basically the coaches and front office and everybody all hands on deck to figure out, okay, sort of the Apollo 13 meeting. All right. What, what on this ship works exactly and, and how to, uh, you know, basically figure out a way to get this team moving forward in a positive direction. And it's, um, and it's tough. I mean, there there aren't a lot of options uh, internally or externally. And, um, you know, they, they were back at it. The players were back in the building today. And I guess they're trying to put their best foot forward. Yeah, good luck trying to figure out what you do well. I just – I didn't anticipate an absolute blowout, right? Like, I, I talked about this game last week. I wasn't confident at all picking the Patriots. But I thought that Belichick would rally the troops. I thought that the defense would play well enough. And I thought they wouldn't turn the football over as much. I thought Mac would play super safe and they'd run the ball a ton and it'd be an ugly rock fight and the Patriots would survive. There was no really tangible reason for me feeling like the Patriots are going to win. It was really just hope and looking back at what they've done in their past. And to just no show like that was just, I mean, Maybe I'm just naive, but that was astounding. The, the level of a beatdown that we saw at home. I was at the scene of the crime. And I'll tell you, by halftime, people were leaving that place. They, they, were, they were gone. There, there was thousands of people, not overreacting. Thousands of people were out of Gillette Stadium by halftime. They had seen enough. It, it, was, it was over. 156 yards, one of 16 on third and fourth down combined. 
one of six Saints defense is good, but one of 16, you're an NFL offense. The Saints had uh, two times the amount of time of possession. The Saints, one of the worst, if not the worst red zone offenses in football. They went three for four in the red zone, three for three in the go area. I mean, it's just the goal to go three for three, three for four red zone. It, debacle. So uh, we, we've heard that they're going to stick by Mac Jones, Greg. Bill O'Brien said they're sticking with Mac Jones. Uh, the feel in the building, if you look at what people are saying, and maybe you have your own reporting on this, but there's there's been some things said today on X and on the air at 98.5 especially that this is one of those things where it's like, yeah, Mac, we, we're going to start you this week, but make sure you have a good week of practice and don't screw things up on Sunday because this is likely your last shot. Yeah, I I would agree with that. I mean, you know, look, when I was watching the film back, um, basically by like halftime, I was like, Max done. He's he's done. He's um his confidence is shot. Um, you could see some frustration on the part of his teammates. It seems like if he hasn't lost them, it's close to guys like, and we heard them after the game. Hunter Henry, David Andrews, fellow captains, who you know are are shining a bright light at the turnovers and you could see Hunter Henry react to the pick six where, you know, he's putting his arms up in the air. Like what the hell I was open on the play. Like, what are you doing? We just talked about this. You're not going to, you said you weren't going to turn the ball over. We're not going to turn the ball over and you give them another touchdown. And then, you know, and then the, the, the fumble to start the second half, the pitch, um, it's bad. I mean, look, you can make the case. The Dallas game, I somewhat excused, and we talked about it. Like, the pressure rate was so much, and he obviously got sped up from the strip sack. Starting with that, he he didn't know what to do, and he was out of sorts, and that happens to every quarterback at some point in their career, especially young quarterbacks under a lot of pressure. So you could sort of – be like, okay, that's a one-off. We haven't really seen Mac that way before. So they just need to figure out a way to settle him down. And, you know, maybe he'll be okay. You know, that was not that was not the case in this game. Um, you know, I, I wrote a column for BSJ where I, I, I went through multiple um, plays where I downgraded Mac. Um, even like, even, for example, the long pass connection that he had to Kendrick Bourne. Okay, I mean, it went for like 26 yards. He hit him in stride. It's nice, but you know the ball was up there forever. Like you can't, you can't get away with that. It's it got away with it on that play, but it didn't need to be that way. His mechanics are still extremely sloppy. He wasn't quite going off the back foot as much this time. He was just throwing flat footed, and there were times where he could drive the ball. I didn't think pressure pressure rate was still above 40 in this game, but it it didn't seem hopeless uh, that you know. I, he had opportunities to make plays in this game, or at least time to make plays. But he's he's not patient with the with with the play developing. He he's his timing is off, and and to me, Nick, like it, it's not just Jones, and that's why <clears throat> I'm okay with them sticking with him because you know here's an example: second play of the game, they come out. Ramondre Stevenson runs for I think seven or eight yards on the first play. They come out on the next play. And Juju Smith-Schuster runs a route that I'm not sure was correct. But more importantly, he's in the right slot. It's a typical Patriots route. Just, you know, you've seen Wes Welker. You've seen Julian Edelman. You've seen Troy Brown. Like, you know, haul ass up on the defensive back, and then all of a sudden turn around and you're available. And and because you are a threat to go up the field, the guy has to back off a little bit. That's how you get separation. But what does Juju Smith-Schuster do? do? First of all, he cuts his sh- uh, his route short. It's not timed up to the top of Max route, top of his drop, and he also came off the line like crap. And and Tyron Matthew wasn't threatened at all. And and, and in fact, he took a couple steps like he's going to jump it, which got Mac to 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 flinch uh, to pump fake, and then he threw up top to uh, Kendrick Bourne incomplete. He wasn't that open, and it's just like. They can't even do simple stuff like that, Nick. And it's not just it's not just Mac Jones. It's the receivers. It's the lack of separation. It's 
how Bill O'Brien is stringing things along. There's a way to sort of give your give your quarterback breadcrumbs to to gain their confidence back. And you know, let's run high percentage plays and get his feet under him. And and they they can't do any of that stuff right now. So, but as far as Mac specifically about him keeping his job from the people I've talked to. And from my understanding, this is more about, they don't have a good alternative. If, if they had a guy ready to go that they felt good about, I think Mac would be out this week, but Bailey Zappi was worse than Mac was in this game. He's awful. He doesn't have a whole lot of support in the building. (laughs) Will Greer, we don't know how much of the playbook he knows. Malik Cunningham is not a quarterback still. People got to stop bringing him up. He's not a quarterback. Bill O'Brien talked about it again today. So really, they had no choice. And, and, and I'm in favor of it. You know, you get one more shot. It's against the Raiders defense that they should be able to have more success against. The first five weeks, they've gone a, 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 against a lot of really good pressure defenses that they couldn't block. It shouldn't be as much of an issue with this game outside of Max Crosby, but really he should be on a short leash. Like, all right, you get one more chance. All right. And let's see what you do with it. And and Max also got to earn back the trust of his teammates as well. I'm fine with him playing this weekend. I think if you sit Mac down, it's done, right? That, that's it's mm-hmm. the end all be all to me. You can't sit him down. I don't think you can sit him down and then go back to him weeks later and and play this in and out game. Like once you make that call and once you sit your starting quarterback down and say, we don't trust you, it's over. It, it's it's donezo. Don't have much of an issue with him playing this week. You've got Buffalo and Miami after this weekend. So the idea of like playing Bailey Zappi so Matt can get his head right and then come back next week, what, against Buffalo? Now Buffalo has two or three starters down for the rest of the year, so that defense is going to be impacted by that. But still, Buffalo is usually a boat race, and then you got Miami, down in Miami. You're going to have Mac sit and come back against those two division rivals? you got to try to get him right. He's broken. Uh, Everybody sees it. He's broken. He knows it. Team knows it. Coaching staff knows it. I know it. You know it. The American people know it. He's broken. And this was the concern, Greg, the the idea of not giving the quarterback enough. Like, to me, there's a clear through line of all of this. And I'm not trying to – there's differences between excuses and reasons. I've said it before, Mm -hmm. right? An excuse is I didn't get up for work in the morning because I'm a lazy ass. A a reason is – I couldn't go into work today because I have a fever and I feel like crap and I'm going to stay in for the day. There are reasons why Mac Jones got to be broken. No matter how you, even if you feel like at best he, he's an average quarterback, he's playing like the worst quarterback in football right now. Clear reasons why. It, there's, there's the through line. Solid, hopeful rookie season. The Matt Patricia, Joe Judge thing last year. And then this debacle. And if you watched him against Philly, I remember posting on X at Nick C Radio, if you want to follow me, posting on X that day, man, the the pocket movement by Mac has been tremendous in this game. Go back and watch that Eagles game. If you have it, if you have the ability to do it, go back and watch that Eagles game and see how many times Mac had to manipulate the pocket, east, west, north, south, get away from pressure and step up on the run and make throws. And and he did that for the first couple of weeks. But inevitably, he's not that guy. He can't do it 17 games a year. He doesn't have that talent. He doesn't have that skill set. He's never had the skill set. He's a scheme quarterback. That's what he is. You need to surround him and give him an offensive line. So, yeah, he's broken. I, I think he got to the point of just being broken. Like, he doesn't trust, as Greg's saying, the footwork's all off. He's not seeing the field well. He's a guy playing with nobody that he trusts. And the one dude that he trusted in Jacoby Myers, again, had a great game last night for Vegas. This was inevitable, folks. Like, I'm sorry. it was, Unless you thought Mac Jones was a truly special quarterback, which I've never said, Greg's never said. I I haven't heard anybody say that he's a special quarterback unless you thought he was able to overcome all of this. This was kind of the inevitable path. Greg and I have been talking about it for a year and a half. If you keep not setting this guy up to succeed, he's going to break. 
that's what we've seen the last two weeks. All right. So the question is, well, Nick, just to follow up on that, I think, I think, you know, the, the operative phrase, you know, system quarterback, I think is that you brought up is, is absolutely correct. And there's nothing wrong with being a system quarterback. I mean, you can Brock Purdy's a system quarterback with, you know, with the 49ers, Jimmy Garoppolo was a system quarterback with the 49ers. Um, Tua is a system quarterback with the with the Dolphins. Jalen Hurts is a system quarterback with the Eagles. You know, you as Bill Belichick, as the chief of everything football with the New England Patriots, it was on him to say, OK, well, you know, First of all, it needs to believe that quarterback is the, is is the, the most important position on the field. We're not even sure whether we can agree on that. That Belichick believes that, um, so that's problem number one. But he should have said, "Okay, Max, our quarterback. You know, at least for the next couple of years, how do we set him up for success?" And you know, they could have brought back Jacoby Myers, and they didn't do it. Where he clearly. That was a guy who was clearly somebody that he looked for in crucial spots. I mean, you know, just put yourself in Mac Jones's shoes. When you're at third and seven, third and eight in this offense, like who you as a quarterback, like who do you have confidence in that you can go to? Be like, all right, this the, we really need to convert here. Who am I going to? Devontae Parker, Juju Smith Schuster, uh, you know, Hunter Henry, I guess, but he needs help to get open. Mike Gasicki. Is he still on this team? It's hard hard to even tell. You know, Ramondre Stevenson is your check down back. I mean, what what he should have done, Bill would have said, okay, he's gonna he's a quarterback. He doesn't have special escape skills. Um, we need to make sure he's well protected. That's job number one. Let's do that. Let's make sure he has a reliable slot. Uh, somebody that can that can get open quickly and be reliable. Let's re-sign Jacoby Myers. Let's get a third down back. That kind of worked well with Kevin Falk, Shane Vereen, James White for a lot of championships around here. Let's do that instead of completely ignoring it. Uh, you know, let's go get something on the outside. You know, we can't rely on Tyquan Thornton. It's not looking good. Let's let's go get a dynamic weapon on the outside. Then you then you step back and you say, okay, our quarterback, it just happens to be Mac Jones, has a chance for success. Uh, if we do things right as coaches, if Bill O'Brien does things right as an offensive coordinator, and he did zero of these things. And and how how can people, like you said, how can people be surprised uh, where they're at right now? And it's not to say that Max Blameless, which we've said, and that, that's, Absolutely. The, that, that's the shell game people play. There's a lot of moving of the goalposts. There's a lot of shell games happening. It just comes down to like who who deserves most of the blame for where Mac is at this point. And to me, Mac Jones didn't wake up in Dallas saying to himself, I'm going to go be a broken quarterback. Like Mac Jones didn't wake up and say, uh, my footwork's going to suck. I'm going to totally implode. I can't wait for this to happen. And, and he wasn't an all out disaster. Even if you weren't thrilled with him, he wasn't bad the first three weeks. So, again, he's not blameless. He's made mistakes. We see it the last two weeks. He's been broken. That's inexcusable the way he's played. But, man, when when I just don't know what, what you would expect. If you had reasonable expectations of who the player is and you look at what has happened and how he was developed and compare it with other players with similar skill sets, you would see that there's one team doing everything the opposite that everyone else is doing. And the, the team that's going the opposite is the worst offense in football right now. Everybody else doing it the opposite way. We're all talking about those young quarterbacks. I don't think that's a coincidence. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets Win or lose. I love those little suckers, those little bonus bets. It's like free money. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, with that said, Greg, quickly, uh, do you think Belichick and Mac are losing the players on this team? Uh, 
Well, by sticking with Mac Jones, Bill is risking that if it doesn't get any better. I mean, but I don't think he has a choice. I mean, this is the, like we said, this is where they are. You can't Zappy's nothing. Will Greer's probably not ready yet. Um, I don't even know how good he is. Um, so, you know, they don't really have a choice. But, you know, if things go poorly, um, like let's just put it this way. Mac cannot be pulled or early from another game um, unless the Patriots are the one doing the blowing out. Just it can't happen. I mean, I know there are people, there are people around the team who uh, basically feel like, you know, if your quarterback gets pulled with a, with a quarter to play in two straight games, like he's done. And there are people wondering, um, is the, is the offense broke? Is the offense broken or did Mac break the offense? Um, I do think that some of those people, while I respect them are a little bit biased because you know, they're in charge of the, a lot of the situation. Um, and by indicting the entire offense, you're indicting, you know, the coaching staff and the front office and things like that. Um, but I do think, I think Mac Jones, I think Bill, I think Bill needs to get with the leaders or at least the locker room or the, you know, in, in front of the team meeting. And he needs to send a strong signal that like, look, I think he needs to take a lot of blame. He needs to get up there and say, look, myself and the rest of the coaches have brought this on. We put you in this position. It's not your fault. It's not any player's fault. Okay. It's, it's gotten this bad because of the decisions that we've made, you know, how we prep the team. You know, that being said, we are forgetting about all that stuff. We are burying the football, whatever. It's, it's over and done with. We are going to do better. Starting today, here's the plan for how we're going to get better. Um, we are not going to 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 walk before we can crawl. We are going to go out there. We're going to give our offensive linemen a good chance to get their feet under them. We are going to run the ball incessantly. The plays that we rep, the plays that we run in the pass game, are going to be those that we have repped a ton of times in practice. There is no gray area. Everyone knows where they should be. We know the timing. We have worked it out. This is what's expected. If you run these plays, yeah, we're not going to put up a ton of points, but we're going to move the ball. And we have a chance to be successful. And if we do that, then we'll keep expanding things. But we need to go back and do things. And I think I think that Mac also probably needs to get in front of his offense. Um, and he probably needs to get with the defense too. And apologize to them. And, and talk about the mistakes that he's made, take a ton of ownership, not just to the media, but to his teammates, and, and pledge that, you know, it's over, that he is, he is going to do right by them, he's going to keep them in the game, he is going to show, show more courage in the pocket, which is something I think he's lacked at times, I understand why he's at that place, but sorry, that's part of the job. And so I think, I think a lot of conversations – needed to happen yesterday, today, going forward. And really, it's got to be about we're not even talking about the past. We're putting it out of our yeah. minds. We are zero and zero. You know, let's go win the next game and, and just well, take it from there. Let me ask you, do you think that Bill has it in him to do that? And do you think Mac has it in him to do that? And do you think those conversations have happened in the last 36 to 48 hours? I do think they've happened. Um, you know, I, I don't know how much, you know, we've heard guys like Julian Edelman was on Colin Coward and he talked about, you know, Bill takes a lot of response. He has a lot of accountability and stuff like that. And I don't know, from what I've heard, that's kind of the old bill, um, you know, that he doesn't do that as much anymore, but maybe that's part of the reason why they're in this spot that, you know, Bill hasn't put enough on himself has let the players sort of point fingers at each other and that there's a little division in the ranks. And, and you know, it doesn't get to become 72 to three just because you're not a talented team. It gets, it, it becomes 72 to three because um, people don't trust each other. They're looking at the coaches. Does this guy know what he's doing? Is Does Bill, is he, the old man has has lost it. You know, those sort of things go on. A lot of doubt and 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 questions creep in that players' minds. But like, you know, look, I think all the co all the coaches, you know, it needs to start with Belichick. 
and then it needs to filter down to the coordinators and then the position coaches. But I think they all need to stand in front of the players and they need to take it upon themselves and they need to say, I've let you down. And look, I think part of this whole restart and self scout self evaluation that they're doing needed to include Belichick and Bill O'Brien taking a hard look at the coaching staff. Like, yep. you know, you can't tell me that Adrian Clem is doing a good job. I mean, you just can't like, I, don't, I can't tell you who's doing a bad job because there's so many guys that are playing that I don't have. Uh, I don't have a frame of reference to, you know, whether it's the rookies like Mafi or guys coming back from injury. We don't know where they are health wise, strange, a um, you know, guys like, you know, Calvin Anderson and Vidarian Lowe and, and uh, you know, Riley Reef. Uh, we don't, I, I don't have enough film on them as Patriots to be like, this guy's definitely gone backwards. But, you know, the pad level's bad. There are mental mistakes in every game. They don't look – the offensive line does not look well prepared to me. And I'm sorry, Troy Brown is one of the greatest Patriots. And, you know, he's got a red jacket or at least will have one. Um, you know, great Patriot. But I'm sorry, this is two years in a row that I watched the film and I don't know what the hell these these receivers are doing. And the attention to detail on the offensive line and with the receivers is just not where it needs to be. And I think those guys, whatever needs to happen, if those guys can't do it, then Bill needs to find somebody who can do it. I, I don't know if you need to fire him, but you know, bring in Dante Skarnickia just to, to watch for a week and give his thoughts. Um, you know, get somebody in here. Maybe Bill O'Brien needs to get more involved with the wide receivers. Like whatever needs to happen, it needs to get better. And it's and and I do think it starts with the coaching. I don't think the coaching's been good, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Not to defend the guy in the job that he did last year, but honestly, the more you watch, and I'm not saying Bill O'Brien is Matt Patricia, Matt Patricia, but it's rather obvious that Patricia became the scapegoat. And did he do a good job? No. But there are a lot of things that we saw last year still happening this year. And guess who's not in New England? Matt Patricia. So there's been some leakage there. There's no doubt about it. The receivers are not good. Troy Brown has to step up. And some of that's a talent issue. But as you're saying, what Greg's talking about are, are things that he sees on film that should be easily correctable. It's not a talent question. It's, hey, run the right route. And these guys have been in the league for a long time. Like, figure it out. Coach them up. Not only not only run the right route, but run it the right way. I mean, you heard Ju- Julian Edelman talked in that same interview about Jacoby Myers and how, you know, he was bothered that he wasn't brought back. And, and Colin Coward said something about, like, he gets good separation. And Julian says he gets great separation. And what do we know? Jacoby Myers is not the fastest guy in the world. You know, he's not running by anybody. He's not explosive or anything like that. But – he ran the routes the right way. You know, you run it with precision, you make precise cuts, you threaten, you know, give a fake with your head. And all of a sudden that gets the guy moving. And then you turn outside, boom, there's four yards of separation where a quarterback can get the ball in there, turn around, you know, get yards after the catch. None of that stuff goes on anymore. I mean, you know, Juju Smith-Schuster had a ton of routes in this game where I'm just like, this, this, that's horrible. You know, Demario Douglas got a chance to run the old slot, you know, Z return, you know, fake, go inside, go outside. It was crap. Like, somebody's got to be coaching and being like, this is the way to do it. And you would think Troy Brown, who did it for, you know, as good as anybody for years, would do it. But, you know, maybe he's just not a good coach. It's just not – it's not good enough. The attention to detail is horrible on this offense. What if there was an app that used AI and machine learning to suggest smart sports bets? There is, and it's called Odds R. It is a mobile app you need to know what bets of the day are smart ones. Download the app, sign up for an account, and let the latest data analysis guide you through today's point spreads, money lines, and over-unders. I just did it. It's easy. If you see green, that's a smart bet. If you see yellow, you're on your own. If you see red, don't do it. Odds are doesn't take your bet. It makes you better at it. With odds are on your mobile phone, you're a tap away from making a smart play. It's smart betting made simple. Find odds are app in the app store or on Google play. Get a two free week trial. It's just 10 bucks a month after that. But hey, listen to that. That's for the usual people, the normal people. Listeners to this podcast, the Greg Bedard Patriots podcast, you actually get a special deal. Get your first 30 days of the app free. Just go to oddsr, O-D-D-S-R, dot com slash Bedard. 
to download the app. That's oddsr.com slash Bedard. 30 days of smarter betting free. We'd call that a winning bet. The casinos and sportsbook want you to bet. Odds are wants you to win. Go get it. Hey, Greg, before we move forward, it just you brought up Jacoby Myers, and I posted this today. I don't know if you get to see it. I know you were busy today, but uh, when you look at the statistics, this is going to turn your stomach. So <laughs> Jacoby Myers this year, 25 catches. If you take Juju and Devontae Barker combined, they have 26 catches. Jacoby Myers this year has 274 yards. Juju and Parker combined have 215. Touchdowns. Jacoby has three. Your number one and number two receivers on this team have zero combined touchdowns. Jacoby Myers, and he missed a game. And yes, Parker missed a game. But Myers missed a game due to a concussion. Jacoby Myers missing one game this year has actually produced pretty much the same, if not better in some statistics than your one and two combined. That is ridiculous. And, you know, Greg and I talked a lot about this offense before the year began. And look, some of the things you just can't predict some of the things we saw, right. We, we questioned the third down back. We questioned if they could get separation at the receiver position because we saw it last year and their lack of ability to do so. There were some of those questions, but we thought that they, were, they would have at least a base to work with. Uh, you know, we thought they might have a run game. They've had no run game. No one could see Ramondre Stevenson uh, falling off a cliff to start this year, the first three weeks. Last couple of weeks have been a little bit better, but he's not the same guy he was last year. Of course, nobody could see the offensive line with the injuries and the fluidity. No one could have guessed that Michael Wenu was going to be, you know, just not Michael Wenu due to the injury. It, Cole Strange, even if he didn't take a step forward, we figured, okay, well, at least you can put him there and he can play <laughs> and not be a complete disaster. He gets injured. Um, you know, so w- when you start to put it all together, it's a mess. It- it's a mess. And I-, I really do have this question because I- I've been thinking about this the last day or two. And we always talk about how, Greg, this the structure of the Patriots, it's just so Bill Belichick centric. And I do wonder. Like, does Bill have it in him to say goodbye to people around him? Does does he have that killer instinct now that he's in his 70s and he's had these guys around him for as long as he has, whether Bill O'Brien came back because of Kraft or whatever. But you look around. Is Belichick willing to step up and say, Troy, you suck? If that's the case, you're not doing your job. You suck. See you later. Does he have it in him? I don't know. He's got his two kids on the staff. Pretty tough to say goodbye to your kids and fire them. Gerard Mayo. You just look around. Joe Judge. You can go on. And what you have is this, you have this Patriots bubble. And I don't know, Greg, and, and I ask you, is Belichick at this point of his career, is he willing or able to actually burst that bubble himself and say, we're too insulated? This is this is too much Patriotsville. I, I, we have to start doing some things differently. Uh, I don't think that he does, Nick. Um, I can't speak to his motivations from that, but I, I do think, you know, the overriding thing is I think he thinks, and I think it's, you know, now with the evidence that we have in recent years, um, I think he was deluded into this by – you know, Tom Brady and the success that he brought to this franchise as the quarterback is, you know, the greatest of all time that bill believes that his system tried and true probably goes back to, in some part to the Naval Academy and his dad, that his system um, will ultimately work out in the end that, that, you know, so, He's not going to do anything that deviates from it. He wants people that know that know his system, that teach his system. And I, I just don't think he's capable of that. I mean, Edelman talks about him being very accountable. You know, you know, I I don't really believe that anymore. And and I think that I think that that's a big problem with this team. I mean, I do think that, you know, Bill needs to, you know, crack some heads um, in terms of his coaching staff to get things better. Um, because look, if the players aren't executing it, and especially on offense, they're not ex- executing it, 
then, you know, you're, you're either coaching it or allowing it to happen. And, you know, they have to figure out which one it is and they have to act accordingly. All right, let's jump quickly. Just, just a, a couple minutes on this, Greg, I want your thoughts. I, I read what you had to write about the defense. So I, I know how you feel, but for those who haven't necessarily read what Greg has written this week, um, the defense, if you look at the numbers, like third down defense and total yards and stuff, you, you might feel better th- about the defense than you should. I, I know Judon and Gonzalez are out, but even before then, we started to see some cracks. Just your thoughts, is this defense as good as they should be? Well, it's hard to tell with the injuries. I mean, I, I right. think the biggest, you know, I, I do think it, it's – it's been a problem how they started games, and I don't even think they started the game well. I mean, the Saints drove into Patriots territory, and they kind of self-destructed on their own. They had a mis- mis- uh, third down miss blitz pickup um, where the fullback just, you know, he was lined up right over Jawan Bentley, and he just left, and Bentley just went right after Carr and sacked him. I thought the Saints were about as advertised on offense. Pretty sloppy. Carr missed some throws. There were penalties. Like, you know, I didn't think that they they were great in this game, but I thought that the, you know, look, yeah, there was the pick six, but the next two drives, the Saints went right down and scored. Um, Yeah. You know, JC Jackson. So there was a big pass play. I forget who it was. um, Caught it right in front of Jabil Peppers down to like the five yard line. Um, That was JC Jackson blowing the coverage. Like JC Jackson was in man to man. Everybody else was playing cover three. Like JC Jackson was supposed to be there to possibly cut underneath that pass and maybe pick it off. We've seen him do that in the past and cars, the exact type of quarterback that could do it. You know, JC Jackson, I did not, you know, he looks okay on the field, but I didn't think he played well in the game. My biggest concern, Nick, and this is starting to grow a little bit. And because it's been so lopsided, the games, it gets lost in the, in the shuffle a little bit. I'm worried, especially after the injury to Matthew Judon, I'm worried about the quarterback pressure. They had like no quarterback pressure in this game and they were bringing a ton of blitzes. I think they blitzed over 40% of the time. They are doing that more and more. And the problem is Nick is, you know, it's okay. If you blitz, you know, that's good. If you're playing man coverage behind it, like that's, if you can time the blitz and have good coverage, tight coverage behind it, that's when you start to get turnovers and balls bouncing all over the place. Like that's how the Patriots, when they were playing good defense, um, you know, starting in about 2014, you know, that's how they did it. They got after the quarterback and then they had really good coverage with Revis and Browner and these guys, you know, keep to leave at different times. Um, but now because of the injury to Gonzalez, because of Judon, um, they're getting no pressure. They're bringing blitzes more and more and, they're playing zone behind it. And it's easy for the quarterbacks to pick them apart. And, you know, like Carr wasn't even good in this game. And and I don't think he's good at all. And he took some check downs because, you know, that's the kind of the gutless wonder he is. But I, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm pretty worried about – look, I'm not going to say this defense is bad. But we all know the way this team is constructed, the assets that have been put into this team – the defense needs to be great. That's part of the formula. That's what yep. Belichick envisioned for this team when it came into this year. And you can't cry about one injury to the cornerback. And they have enough edge guys. I mean, they've kept Anthony Jennings around. They drafted Keon White, who kind of got run over a few times in this game. Josh Uche is waiting for a big payday. You notice him once in a while, but he's not the factor he was last year. They have to figure out a way to generate a pass rush or – you know, or when it comes time to like, it could even happen this weekend, you know, against the Raiders. If the, if the offense all of a sudden gets up and starts scoring for once and they get up into the twenties, like, and, and they can't hold up Josh McDaniels offense, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo and Devonte Adams and Jacoby Myers and, you know, Josh Jacobs, you know, if, if they're not good in this game, if they're not better than what they've shown in recent weeks against Dallas, against the saints, um, you know, they're going to be in real trouble on that side of the ball. I mean, even if they get into a high scoring game, I don't know whether they can win it. The defense has to, they need to start turning the ball over. I mean, two, two turnovers. It's not good enough. Not for the way they're built. Yeah. The two takeaways ridiculous. And, and really it's gradations, right? When you're looking at each side of the football and special teams, which I'll get to in a second, but 
I'm, I, I noticed this last week when I was looking at this game, getting ready for the Saints Patriots game. And on my podcast, Nick Cattle Show, uh, you can check it out YouTube, Spotify, Apple Pods. But looking at it, I noticed like the Patriots, yeah, their pressures were up there, their hurries were up there. The pre- all of those stats were there. But I also looked at the blitz percentage. And even going into this weekend, they were top three or four, I think, with blitzing. Yep. Um, so they've and done it all happened. year long. And and now without Christian Gonzalez, somebody who you could put one on one with somebody and trust, it's even tougher. It gets tougher to send extra guys because now you're leaving, you know, the secondary's ass hanging out of their pants. In that situation, you still haven't really fully figured out McCordy because you've got, you know, you've got Duggar playing deeper, which has taken him away from making some of those impact plays. And you you don't have Judon now, as you mentioned. Uche has not been good to my eyes. Uh, I, I know I don't break down the all 22, but he's he's not making an impact as much as he did last year. And free safety is Gonzalez. an issue, Nick. Free free safety is a big issue on this team. It's 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 underplayed right now, but it, it's 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 rough out there with Duggar and and Jabril Peppers back there. It is good 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 team. on you bringing it up. Look at the team from thirty thousand feet, right? Like we thought this offense had a chance of being good, not great, good. It's well below good. It's the worst in the league. We thought this defense had the potential to be top five. They're not there. They're just, and that was before the Judon and Gonzalez injuries. They, they weren't an elite defense. And then you say, well, damn, maybe you can hang your hat on special teams, investing the draft capital and bringing guys in. And, and we always bust Belichick's balls for putting so much into special teams. Well, maybe they'll show. And you got Joe Cardona. Uh, you know, snapping it to me Sunday at Gillette Stadium, and I was in section 111. You've got your rookie kicker, four of eight, and some of that obviously has to do with the aforementioned Cardona. You've got Jabril Peppers making a fair catch at the five-yard line on Sunday for no apparent reason. You've got Pop Douglas being laid out to dry by his teammates because they don't cover punts, and he gets smoked, it seems like, at least once a game. Special team sucks. Offense yep. isn't as good as they, as we thought they would be. Defense is not nearly the elite, you know, defense we thought we might see. And the special team sucks. And that's why, like, I, here's the one thing I would say before we get to Belichick's future. I just, I had this fear, Greg. I had the fear before we got to this point. But my fear has been for some people, and I don't think it's most people. I think most people are, are seeing Belichick and looking at this team and saying, ugh. But there are still some people out there that are going to use the quarterback as a scapegoat. And it's not to say that he's blameless again, but look at this team, folks. The special teams isn't good. The run game isn't good. The offensive line isn't. What's good about this team right now? Tell me. Give me something that's good about this football team. And I I just don't know how you can whittle it down to one guy. The, the one guy that Dan Orlovsky said it, and I thought it was said perfectly, I think it was late last week, quarterback is a dependent position for like 95% of the guys. Yes, you have your Josh Allen and your Patrick Mahomes and your freaks, mm-hmm. but quarterbacks depend. Everything is linked together. You're not a one-on-one receiver that just wins the route and catches the football, right? Like you, you have to depend on everybody else to do their job at a high level. And if you're not truly special, like Tom Brady, you're not going to be able to rise the level of everybody to the point to make you good or very good. So just look at the team. It's so funny. I just thought of this. Like when, when Brady was on this team, it was always about the 53. Everybody would talk about the 53. And then as Brady left, everybody was like, oh, man, Brady's gone. And it kind of went through this like sob transition period. Like, you know, you had a relationship and somebody broke up with you and it was difficult. And, and now we're not looking at the 53. Some, some are just looking at the one like this team's just, it, it's not good enough and it's not being coached well enough. With the busy fall season already in swing, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam packed days. Factor America's number one, ready to eat meal kit can help fuel you up fast with chef prepared dietitian approved, ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. First of all, I got an email saying like, be on the lookout for it when it was delivered. It, it was ready to go. You could tell that it was fresh. These guys know what they're doing. Too busy to cook 
this fall, but want to make sure you're eating well with Factor. Skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, the prepping, the cleaning too, while still getting flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's never frozen fresh meals are ready to, in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy and get back to crushing your goals. I love, this was my favorite one, loaded bacon shredded chicken with sauteed spinach, green beans, and ranch sour cream. This only has 650 calories. I got the keto option to keep with my diet. There are so many options over there. Basically anything you wanna do in terms of dietary restrictions, they can do it. You gotta check it out. Head to factormeals.com slash Bedard50. That's code Bedard50, B-E-D-A-R-D-5-0 at factormeals.com slash Bedard50 to get 50% off. All right, so with that said, Let's uh, before we get to three up, three down, wrap it up with the future of Belichick. Greg, um, it ain't going well. Breaking news. And y- you got to wonder, is this it? I mean, if you just you don't have to be a math major, but if you uh, go six and six and I don't know how many people feel like this team can go six and six over the rest of the year. You're still looking at a seven win season. Is is this it for Belichick? Is is this the beginning of the end, starting in Dallas. Um, look, I, I do think, you know, it, and uh, as as one of my co-hosts like to say, um, we ha- we're doing a podcast today. Uh, it's a, it's <laughs> no, a twice, <laughs> twice weekly podcast. Um, so we have to talk about things right now. But, you know, look, unless 72 to 3 ha- starts to happen regularly, um, if this reset doesn't work, I see basically um, no chance of Belichick being let go during the season. I mean, I just don't, I just don't think he deserves that. And right. um, I don't think that's going to happen. And I just, I just don't, um, you know, if, if the worst comes to worst and Mac Jones isn't good and he turns the ball over this week, then they'll put in another quarterback and maybe that'll juice the guys up. I, I don't know, but I don't think it'll get that bad. So a lot of it is dependent on how things look the rest of the way. And, um, you know, are things impl- improving? How rapidly are they? I think it, it really comes down to Nick for me is, you know, how far away do they look at the end of the season? Now, we know how far away they look right now. I mean, they, they, they look like they're in the race for the number one pick in the draft. That's how bad things are right now. Um, you know, if things stay that way, if they're, you know, if they're a four or five win team and there's not a whole lot of hope and Mac Jones looks done and all that stuff, then I, I think Kraft with his remarks over the recent years with his uh, remark, even after, after the Dallas game, before the saints game, where he, he at a charity event, he says, you know, I don't like the losing. Um, I think that I think that Bill needs to be done, and I think that uh, I think that the Crafts probably have ideas about how to bring this the football operations into the present age. I think it, it, my my biggest fear, Nick, is like it, if it looks like they need a new quarterback and they need all new receivers and they have you know they need to rebuild the offensive line and they need to add more people on the defense. Are you trusting Bill Belichick to do that? I'm not. No, I'm sorry. No. He's no. had he's had how many years since Brady left? I mean, this started before Brady left, 2019. You know, they were crap. And uh, like he's had he's had so many this isn't just recency bias. He's had so many years to get the next quarterback ready after Brady, to get the next slot receiver after Edelman ready, to get the next third down back after James White to get ready, to get the next tight end after Gronk to to, to get ready. To get the next offensive tackle after Nate Soldier to get ready. But, you know, go through the list. Sebastian Vollmer hasn't been replaced for crying out loud on this offensive line. And so if, if it looks like that, and I think it is, I think it's going to look like a complete rebuild after the season, then it needs to be over. And I don't, you know, if if they think Gerard Mayo's the guy, and and I do think there's the sense that Gerard Mayo is like almost like a modern CEO. yes. He 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 has Belichick's fundamentals, but he also thinks of things on a higher plane. He's like a tech CEO, and he's worked in private practice. You know, if if it's Mayo, 
then you say it's Mayo and say, Gerard, do whatever you want to do. You pick the personnel guy. You put together the front office. You put together the coaching staff. You're not beholden to anybody, nobody's sons, anything like that. Like, you make the decisions. It's your ass. It's your head that everybody's going to be after if you don't get this going in the other direction. So do it yourself. But, you know, if the Patriots do find a way and funny things have happened, you know, like that when, you know, the Dolphins team that I covered in 05, Nick Saban's first year, like they they were terrible to start the season. I think they were 0-6 or something like that. But then they won like their last seven games of the year to the point where they were a trendy Super Bowl pick. Do I think that's going to happen with the Patriots? No, I didn't think that was going to happen with the Dolphins. So we need to see the totality of this season. But if things go the way that we think they're going to go, and this is an obvious total rebuild, especially on the offensive side of the ball. No, no, Bill's not getting the keys to do that. Sorry, he had his chance. He had his chance to fix things, and he made things progressively worse on offense. Yeah, 30 and 35 since starting 8-0 and in 2019. And, uh, you know, it's difficult to look at this team and, and believe that there's more than one or two blue-chip guys on it right now. And I, I'm going to stick with what I said before the season. And I know people will say, as you just said, Greg, and I think Tom Curran has said some of this too, which is, well, I need to see how it looks. I don't want to buy into false hope at the end of a year. Yeah. And I said when this season began, if we're talking a five, six win football team, everything's on the table. He's, if he's got to go, he's got to go. And if it's a five win team, he's got to go. Six win team, he's got to go. If it's a seven plus win team, but short of the playoffs, then I think you can, you know, you can look at it and say, all right, maybe that's where we go up to him and say, change the GM role. And, and you can't, you can't pick the personnel anymore. I do think there's some questions, you know, Maz brought this up earlier today. It's a good point. Can you leave Belichick there without the GM role? Cause his shadow is so huge within the organization, mm-hmm. but I'd, I'd, I'd approach him and say, Bill, this isn't working. Like we believe that you can still coach, even though there's been some slippage there, we believe you can still coach. But the, but the personnel thing's not working. And if, if it's a playoff team or you feel like you made a charge and almost made the playoffs, then you stick with the status quo. And I, I think, again, at one and four and the way they've looked, it's difficult to believe this team is going to win any more than seven games. So I think we're going to be down to either Belichick's gone completely or he's going to have to acquiesce and say, all right, I'm going to give the personnel to somebody from outside of the bubble. All right, before we get to three up and a lot down, Check out BSJ, 50 bucks for the year. Uh, Bedard Giardi doing a great job on the Patriots coverage, as always. I also remind you that this episode has been brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. New customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Greg, uh, let's start with the positive, if if you can take any from it. Uh, Did you get the three up? So I did. Uh, I liked Lawrence Guy in the run game. I thought he got off blocks really well in this game. I thought Jelani Tavai was um, good for what he was asked to do. He he wasn't on the field a ton, but I thought he again had another strong game. Um, and I and I liked Riley Reef. Um, you know, David Andrews was pretty good in this game, but Reef uh, for his tr- first time off of IR at at guard. Um, I thought he was pretty good in this game. It was certainly intriguing. Um, I would expect him. Um, if when it was back on his bulky ankle, then I expect Riley Reef to be at left guard. Uh, Antonio Mafi, it's just too fast for him uh, right now. David Andrews, he didn't completely suck. And I think if you're playing most snaps on this offensive line and not completely suck, I'm proud of you. <laughs> um, Pop Douglas made a play before he got concussed. But really, the, 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 the one up for me is the family that sat next to Kelly and I at the game that decided to leave at halftime because it gave me a little extra elbow room for the uh, third there quarter. But I did leave at like 3.30. I was out of there. I wasn't going to sit there and watch all four of that. All right, the, uh, have fun and give me the, the roll call of down in this game. Okay. Uh, here we go. You got a pencil ready? <laughs> I'm um, ready. Mac Jones. Yep. Antonio Maffi. Juju Smith-Schuster. He sucks and blows. Um, the entire <laughs> the entire special teams unit and the three coaches that they have to get the 32nd uh, DVOA special teams. Um, Joe Cardona, they, they've done a masterful job with their contracts extensions this year. Joe Cardona gets one, can't snap anymore. Devontae Parker gets one, can't catch the ball or get open. 
Uh, who else did they extend? There was somebody else. Anyways, I forget. Um, Bailey Zappi was god awful in this game. I mean, he actually had two open receivers to throw to and wasn't even close. Uh, Ty Montgomery. Now I know why he never plays. He's completely clueless on this field. Why he's still on this roster, I don't know. Uh, Michael Wenu was garbage again. Darian Lowe was terrible. Adrian Phillips, when he does play, and by the way, he never plays anymore. Like, that guy can't be happy with his role. And when he got out there, he was bad in this game. Uh, J.C. Jackson was bad, uh, even though he's not horrible. And Jawan Bentley, I've seen better games out of him. So that's that's sort of the roll call for the downs. It's not good. <laughs> it's my takeaway. He's Greg. I'm Nick. The autopsy is finished, thank God. Let's put the body back in the fridge. Um, And we'll be back later this week to preview the Raiders and Patriots coming up on Sunday. And uh, let's see if if Greg feels like this could be another blowout or do the Patriots have a shot of getting this back on the tracks. Till then, be well. AG1 is the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it literally every day. I gave AG1 a try because I was tired of buying and taking a million different pills and vitamins. I wanted something quick, convenient, and packed with all the good and essential stuff I needed to get through the day. I drink AG1 first thing in the morning before starting my day, and it makes me feel like I I could take on the world. Tastes great, gives me a little boost, and then later on is the big payoff. Off AG1, I'm grinding to get through the day, looking at the clock. On AG1, I'm primed and sharp, especially mentally, for my very long days, especially during training camp. Covering my nutritional basis for the day literally couldn't be any easier, which is why I trust AG1. I just mix one small scoop with water and drink it first thing in the morning. Done. I also like that it costs less than $3 a day. Pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with high quality sourced ingredients. Win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need for your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash Bedard. That's drinkag1.com slash Bedard. Check it out.